give these to each person. We're going to have a little sermonette in the middle of our worship service, and we're going to go back to worshiping because we're going to do what the Lord told us to do. Amen. 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 I, uh, everybody here knows I've been uh, resisting. That's not a real uh, news flash to anyone. And it's, it's moving along. They're saying the infection is clearing up. It's turning to clear, but all the fluid's still there. So uh, still some complications with that. And then they're sending me to a neurologist. I told them I didn't, you know, my brain was fine. I had the mind of Christ. They didn't need to check it out. But they're thinking that stuff did some damage and yada, yada, yada. But God is faithful to his word. Amen. Amen. I'm still resisting. But as I was doing it, God laid this verse on my heart. And it was funny because it never, it never ceases. And there are certain things when you're a man of faith, you know, faith and power. You know, here, here's this. You know, uh, so, some people say, "What if Peter ever had to ask for prayer?" Well, guess what he did. He wrote in the Bible, and that where he even told us in James, where they they said, they said, "Ask for prayer one for another." But today, if you're a real man of God and you see lots of things, you know what happens most of the time when people ask for prayer? Oh, you you need to confess. Well, guess what? Your tongue controls your body. I, I've taught you all that, doesn't it? And it's the prayer of faith that changes things. You know, the Bible gives us an outline of how to deal with things. He never leaves us to chance. But after you've, when, when you, you know, when you first get saved or you first learn something, you know, there's no shame in asking for prayer. A lot of times, but when you, Sometimes the more you feel like you've matured, you know, well, I'm not going to ask for prayer. I'm just going to stick it out, you know. I'm gonna, and you end up shooting yourself in the foot. Amen? Yeah. And, you know, well, and then, but then there's the other thing people learn the hard way that not everybody that says they're going to pray for you prays for you. They get on the gossip mill. And the Bible even tells us there's only a certain type of person to ask for prayer from. And people get offended over that. Well, guess what I've learned? People are going to get offended. I just, it's just my job to do my best not to, not to give them a reason for it. Amen? But I sure can't stop them. I can't control what offends you. Can I? You control what offends you. But uh, James chapter 5, starting the verse thing, the it's pray. It starts off the prayer of faith. He said, is anyone among you suffering? Now, who's he talking to? Everyone. Everybody. Everyone. And he, but he's talking mainly to the body of Christ. Yeah. So, uh, church, guess what that means? There, sometimes you're going to go through something that causes you to suffer a little bit. Because you have an enemy in your soul that wants to wear you out. But guess what? Greater is he that's within us than he that's in the world. He's already lost. Yeah. But, you know, don't wake up and go, oh, man, you know. What, well, sometimes maybe you did something wrong. He checks that on down through here. It's one of the things you check off. Because if you don't judge yourself, God's going to it. He's a whole lot. It, it, he's, his stick's a whole lot hard. He, he's got tons of mercy if you get it before he gets there. Right, amen. That's the best way I know how to put it. Amen. 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 And uh, so, is any among you suffering? Now, you know, you can lie to everybody else, but you can't lie to yourself. <laughs> And now we're talking about physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Amen? And a lot of roots that are happening are because there's unhealed things inside you that are causing you to suffer. And God and Jesus paid the price at the cross so you didn't have to suffer one bit. In any area. Amen? Come on, I'm already, it's already good this morning. He said, he said, so then what's he say that should happen next if you're suffering? What's it say? He should pray. So what's the very first thing? So you know you don't, your first reaction isn't to go call the hotline, is it? Your first reaction is for you to pray. So this morning, if you're dealing with something, ask yourself, have I went in faith to God with the word of God and have I prayed about this? If your answer is yes, then we'll go on. And so then is anyone cheerful? Now, how did we go from suffering to cheerful? Amen? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And the enemy wants to suck your joy right out. He says, you know what? 
If, if, you're, if you're cheerful, you should sing praises. So he's telling me after you've prayed, go ahead and worship for a little while. Not because you feel like it, but because God is worth it. If I went by what I felt like, I would never do anything anymore. And neither would you if you were honest. You know, you might have one good day out of, out of, out of six, you know. What kind of life would that be? And then he says, Is any among you sick? He should call for the elders of church, and they should pray over him. Now, this is still true. You know, and it's not because the elders are so great, but it's because the elders have sanctified their lives in such a way that God can flow through them. And they went through some things that there's anointing that flows through them that doesn't flow through anybody else. That's why God set it up that way. I didn't write, I didn't write it. I'm just reading it. And a lot of times people in the body want to take, take away the part about elders and pastors and all that. God ordained that for a reason. But let me tell you, you probably wouldn't want to walk through what most of those people walk through to operate the gifts they walk in. And, and maybe you're starting to walk through some of it to get there now. But there's a difference. In, and you know what? Every, I meet so many people that, that put on their own hats. So what do I say? I don't know who this is for today. Somebody I don't know where. But you say, what's that mean? Well, they decide... God called me to do this and God called me to do that. But they're operating without the anointings in it and they get by a little bit. But their character can't hold up what's going and they get in a mess. Come on, are you with me? So you want to find somebody that's actually called, ordained, that's did it God's way because their giftings, something's going to happen in, in your life when they pray for you. Come on, are you with me? Like, you know, listen, when you all come up here, I expect something to happen because not who I am, but because who God is in me. And you come up here to expect not because who I am, but because who God's ordained me to be. Amen. Are you all with me? Amen. <laughs> so he said, you should call for the children, they should pray over them and anointing him with olive oil in the name of the Lord. Which we do here, by the way. That's not just a metaphorical thing. It's actually something he wants you to do. And he says, the prayer of faith will save the sick person, and the Lord will restore him to health. Now, does anybody know what the word restore means? To make whole, to make new. It's a process. There is such a thing as a creative miracle, but most of the time when God heals, it's a process undoing all the damage that's been done, and he reverses it, and it's step upon step, precept upon precept, faith upon faith. And even sometimes he'll give you some things along the way to help with the process. Amen. Like I got to go back to the gym when I get through all this and I don't really want to go. Maybe I'll make y'all drag me there for the first month or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm not kidding. Neither are we. I need to go. I have to go. If he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Now, why do you think that is? Do you think just because you come up and I lay hands on you, you're forgiven? No, you come up because I'm going to check your heart and you're going to get your heart checked at the altar. If there's going to be any sin, it's going to be exposed and you're going to be convicted and hopefully you're going to repent and turn from it so that you can be healed. Because sin is one thing that brings on sickness, but it's not the only one. It's just one of the first ones he tells you to check. But then after you've been sick a while, sometimes the enemy wants to tell you, well, you must have really done something wrong. When it ain't always about that, sometimes it's about God growing you up. But don't, don't just blow it off. Always check your heart. Why? Because he tells us to right here. Amen? Amen? Amen. Anybody getting something this morning? We're almost to the point of what he wants us to do during worship <laughs> this morning. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another. Now, you know what would happen in today's body of Christ if everybody went around just confessing <laughs> to one another their sins? Ain't none of y'all come. Y'all be looking at each other, you big heathen. I ain't, I ain't having you pray for me. You just told me what you were thinking. I know what's in your heart. You need deliverance, not prayer. You ain't praying for me. But the, the deal is, I believe he's talking about, which I'm going to show you here in a moment, he's talking about a certain type of person that you'd open up to. It's not just every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Right. But when you, there is a reason why you need to confess that thing, because the enemy will keep you bound by your guilt and keep you bound by your shame. 
And once you voice that thing out and you repent and you turn 180 degrees from that thing, it loses its strength the whole day. But you need to be able to do that with a mature person that's actually going to pray for you. Amen? That you're going to be able to trust and say, you know what, hey, I'm really dealing with this. Can you help me? <laughs> And it says that if you confess your sins, one and pray. So, but when somebody comes to you to confess, what's the Bible tell you to do for them? Pray for them. It says pray for one another when you come to confess. It didn't say call your neighbor. It didn't say judge them. It said pray for them. Now, what would happen if this started being how the body of Christ started really acting? We would have a healing explosion, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on, are y'all getting this this morning? And then it goes on to say, the urgent request of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. Now, I'm going to read uh, a few different verses of that in a moment. Just stay with me. So, the, very, the urgent request of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. So, what kind of person are you supposed to ask to pray for you? A righteous person. We're going to look at this in depth. I'm going to go on. Now, some would say, well, we're all righteous through Christ. I don't have to earn anything. Well, let me tell you. He said, he said I'm holy, you be holy. And you know what? Yes, we, we're not going to always hit the mark, but we sure know when we've, we've missed it and we can clean our act up, mm -hmm. and God knows if we're doing our best to hit it. Amen. And we're going to look and see what a righteous person means here in the Scripture, this very context, what type of person we should be looking for <laughs> when we're in, we find ourselves in one of these situations. Mm -hmm. And you might see why it's so hard to find somebody to pray with you here in a moment. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Well, we're about to do something here in a minute, so y'all better be checking your hearts because you're going, because I'm going to expect y'all to get up and do something when I get done. Amen. Just just to let you know. Big smile. Y'all missed me, didn't you? <laughs> Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Praise God. <coughs> Yet he prayed earnestly that it would not rain for three years and six months, and it did not rain on the land. Then he prayed again, and the sky gave rain, and the land produced its fruit. My brothers, if any among you strays from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that whosoever turns a sinner from the error of his way shall save his life from death and cover a multitude of sins. So, guess what he went ahead and dealt with at the end, in case you just weren't sure. That was the excuseful... God, I'm just a man. It's so hard. I don't know how to live like that to keep my life in order where I can do things. He said, Elijah was just like you. Look what he did. Be a man and a woman of faith. Keep your life in order and you can move mountains. The Bible says be ready to give an account of anyone that asks. That means not, hey, wait, can you come back tomorrow? I've got to clean my life up today. That means be ready when someone comes to confess to you to pray that so they can be healed spiritually, physically, emotionally, right then. That means you, you don't know if it's coming. You've got you to stay ready. And guess what that takes? It takes a four-letter word that nobody likes. W-O-R-K. Come on, are you with me this morning? How many here want to see healing? How many want to be healed? How many are starting to see there's something in the scripture about it? Amen. And then we go on in verse 16 again here. I've got to highlight. It says, therefore, confess your sins one to another. Pray for one another. So you may be able to urge your request of a righteous person. is very powerful. Like that. To pray means to make a vow, to literally speak out, to utter aloud. So, you know, that means someone that's going to not just give you lip service that's literally going to start speaking the word of God aloud, expecting something to happen. Now, let me just tell you this. There's a difference between understanding and believing. Most people understand the word of God. Very few people actually believe it. If you don't know what I'm saying, I'll let that sink on you for a little bit. Most people understand what I'm saying right now, but very few people have enough faith to actually believe it. I'm bringing it from the unseen to the seen. Right. 
Now let me just tell you this. You say, well, I, I have no problem dealing, believing for others, and so I have to deal with myself. Well, if you can't do it for yourself, you're really not doing it for others. You're just fooling yourself. Come on, are you with me this morning? Amen. So, but there is times when you got to find one of those crazy faith friends like I preached about. Amen? So who? Who is... So who are you going to ask? Who is this person? Who is this righteous person? Well, right here you'll see it. I'm going to give you, I give you all the breakdown in the Greek there for you. It's someone who is known to contend for miracles. That is what a fervent, righteous person of prayer looks like. You don't just go ask somebody you feel comfortable with. And let me tell you, most people that are known to righteously contend for miracles are going to be the ones that, remember it said that if you... If you steer someone straight, you've covered, you've covered for a multitude of sins. They're the ones that you are going to give it to you straight. And most people stay away from them because they don't want the truth. And he's in the Bible says, so you must know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, guess what happens when you go to these type of people that are that, that their fervent prayer, they're known for miracles, they're going to look the dead in the eye and say, okay, but we're going to have to take care of something first. Amen. And people go, I don't want to deal with that. I'll go ask everybody else but that one. Until the mess gets high enough and the pain level gets high enough and then they don't care. They're like, I just got to get rid of this thing. But who do you ask? So that, you know what? If you start looking in your life today, if you start looking in the body of Christ, I'm not knocking people, but listen, people in the world today, they want to, this is Mission Sunday, we're going to have an awesome time here in a little bit, but people in the world today, they want to see the Word of God alive and well, Amen. working. Amen? Amen. They want to see miracles, signs and wonders. Well, right here, in your own life, if you had to go ask somebody to pray, listen, we're not talking about preachers here. We're talking about the body of Christ is who he's talking to. He said, you look around and you find someone that's known for contending for miracles and have them agree with you in prayer. And if we had to do that today, we might find ourselves looking for a long time. But guess what? You can't change those people, but guess who you can change? Yourself. And if you reap what you sow, what a better thing to start sowing and reaping. Now remember, I said you're going to have to do something into the service, so uh, this isn't a far-off theoretical thing. You ought to start processing pretty quick. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it says, what well, down here in the Greek, I, I'm not even going to try to butcher that word. I didn't listen to it. Uh, sometimes, you know, you can listen to it and it'll help, help you because he'll be able to speak it better. We'll say injuro. I don't know. It means to be at, to work, to be active, to produce an effect. Ones that are powers of miracles, works are wrought by him. You know, so are you trying to, are you, you know, lots of people say, well, you're not supposed to confess and have you pray. Well, you know what? And let me just tell you something, church. If you tell somebody you're going to pray for them, pray for them right then and there. Amen. Or at least, you know, when they turn around and walk off, maybe you pray after they're gone. Some people aren't comfortable with you just praying right then and there. you got to follow the Spirit. But don't wait till later till you forget. If you tell somebody you're going to pray, pray. You know, that's even, you know, Brother Todd, bless his heart, when he was here, he, you know, if I tell somebody I'm going to pray for him, you, you can bet that I'm going to pray. I, I may not be perfect in a lot of things, but if I tell you I'm praying, guess what? I'm praying. Amen. There's no if, and, but about it. I'm expecting something to happen, and we see things happen. Amen when we pray. Amen. And, but, because you know what happened, it, even if your best intentions, if you don't do that, you'll get busy with life, and you'll forget, and now you now you just become a liar. I mean, that's what it is, right? Man, where all this come from? I'm going to go back home for a while. You know? And so, it goes on to work, to operate, and spoken of things, to an effective supplication. And he's one to be known of working and to have an effect, to be powerful, to accomplish something. Now, now that we know what, it, what kind of person we're looking for, that changes the whole aspect of the scripture, doesn't it? 
No, I mean, really doesn't. Mm -hmm. Because how many of you here know people that, that are walking in miracles in their life daily? I know we all know somebody. But he wasn't talking about preachers. He was talking about every member of the body. That's what he wants you to be. That's what he wants you to do. Amen? Well, you say, why do you take one Sunday a year, every year, to donate to a mission Sunday? Well, I could preach a whole month on why I do this, but I won't. But here's the one thing that I don't want you to do. If you're, if you're, getting, this, if you're getting any of these thoughts or ideas already, I need you to take them captive, okay? If you're like, this is boring. This is legalistic. This is like a board meeting. Please exit all of those out of your mind and spirit right, that moment, right at this moment. Because the Bible tells us that we're supposed to give an account to the body. And hey, listen, we have, we have faithful members here that pay their tithes. And we have a, this is a church body, amen? And how many know the Bible tells us what to do with those? Now, I'm not feeling well this morning, so maybe I can pull this off. I feel led by the Spirit. It's not, I, I really don't like it. I'm trying to back out of it as I'm talking about it. But, you know, one of the things is to take care of the man of God. And I'll just tell you, I put myself on the bottom of this list, and I make sure I take care of all the other things that he tells the church to do first. Amen. And we're going to look at those things. And I'm not looking for an attaboy. I'm not looking to give me a raise. God will, God will do that as the increase comes and, and we do his work. I'm not, not about that. Amen? But you all are faithful. So this morning, we're going to look. You say, what are all these things about? Well, this is kind of where you're seeing where your money goes. You're kind of seeing where your time and energy goes. You're kind of seeing where your prayers go. And listen, I'm going to show you this morning, this is part of the vision statement God gave us as a church. It's part of the vision statement He gave us as a body of Christ. And I'm going to show you how we're fulfilled it. And by the way, he's, this is the type of church He's coming back for. Amen. Well, and if you don't believe me, we're going to look at that this morning as we look at so Mission Sunday is is very important. How many know what the verse this church was founded on? Anybody? Luke four eighteen. Luke four eighteen. It's the first one on your mission. Does everybody have one yet, or is Pastor Timmy still? All right. Luke four eighteen says, "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me." Praise God! I thank you for that, Lord, because He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the Poor. That is anybody that is without the riches of God, not just the down and out. Amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. How many know we have a world full of brokenhearted people? Amen. And I, I know most of you know this, but I'm gonna go ahead and point this out. Did he tell them when when you when he sends you, is he is he telling you to pray them in or is he telling you to go to them? Go to them. Go to them. That's that's what sent means, amen. That means you go where there's broken-hearted people. Well, guess what? Broken-hearted people are usually they're usually depressed, upset, down and out, and in some kind of funk, all kinds of messy stuff. And God tells us to go right in the middle of them, so you better be prayed up and filled up when you go. Amen. But is that not what He tells us to do? Right? Come on, that's quiet in here. And to preach deliverance to the captives. Now listen, this is important because, and it says to preach the deliverance to the captives. So I can tell you you can be delivered, but I can't force you to take it. Amen. I can tell you all day long, man, God came to set you free. He set me free. If you'll accept it, He'll deliver you. But, you know, ain't going to happen unless you choose. To receive it. And recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. Anybody ever notice how bruised people, they're just hurt. If you ain't anywhere near them, they're like, ouch. And they're just bound up. Yeah. And God wants to get people free. But how do you know that means you've got to be loving enough to get around them when they're going, ouch. Come on. So that is what he told us to do. He said to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's what he, he told us to do. And so at this church, we have so many different avenues that we do this through. And we're going to share those with you today. 
The next verse I want you to look at is Mark 16, 15 through 20. And he said unto them, Go ye into church every Sunday. <laughs> What's it say? And preach the gospel to every person you like. No. To all those that you get along with. No. To all those that smell good. No. Yeah. To every creature. Amen. Just say Jesus covered it all. Because I call them creatures. They, they're going to get out. going to be specific on me. I call Creatures, they can't get out of it. If they got a soul, they're getting saved. Amen. Amen. And he that believeth is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, how many of you notice that is uh, black and white? That's not gray. How many you know it's time as a body of Christ that we get back to black and white? Amen. Gray has almost destroyed the body of Christ. Amen. Because men of God and, and, and the body of Christ has been too big a wince to stand up and just get, give it straight in love. Uh, listen, I know there's people here this morning at one time or another was offended and upset with me because I gave it straight, but they ended up loving me because they got free from it because they ended up receiving what God was saying, not because I was just some guy up here giving my opinion. Amen. Because it was the Word of God. Amen. And that's what we have to give to the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. That in my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. Thank God for that. And if, <laughs> and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, I teach a whole college class on this. What's the first thing to start operating in these gifts that you have to do? That's that's that is true. That's correct. But you have to go. Nothing starts happening until you go. And you know what? I have news for you. You're not the first one that a spirit of fear tried to come on. And when somebody said you, we're going to go out here and do this, we're going to do this. I want you to go talk to this person one on one. I want you to go. I want you to go here. The enemy use the same tricks on everybody. But in order for these things to operate in your life, the first thing you have to do is start going. Amen. Amen. He said, go and then these things will follow. Now, the whole, for a while, the church, they got like a dog chasing their tail. They were chasing, whenever the church was going from church to church, from meeting to meeting, inside the body of Christ, not going out into the world and chasing signs and wonders. He never said follow them. He said they would follow you. Right. Why do you want to follow what somebody else is doing? Amen. Why not be going yourself and have them following you? And you're supposed, the ones that are supposed to be following you are the lost, not the bunch of Christians already. Anyways, that was free. Are y'all with me? Amen. And so he said, uh, So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he received them into heaven and said on the right hand of God. And they went forth preaching everywhere. Now, listen, we still see where they went to church every week. Uh, if you were here for Acts when I did that five year study, no, I don't know how long it was. <laughs> You realize they still went to church, didn't they? But they went everywhere. Did they not? Working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So they didn't just come up with new stuff. They were confirming the word of God. Amen? So this is a mission Sunday. This is what we're going to talk about what, how we are a church are putting these things into practice. And I just want to tell you, you're going to hear a lot of good things. Please, like I said, get your heart and mind right. We've got to start talking about it. Be, get excited. But this is only like a tenth of what God has us to do, I'm going to tell you right now. We're only rolling on about 10%. And I'm looking forward to the years that go on. I may not even get to be alive 50 years from now, 100 years from now. Some of the things that I believe He's put in my spirit are, are still manifesting. But I'm expecting them to still manifest. Amen. Of course, somebody told me I was going to get it all done by the time I was 50. They better be rolling. I'm knocking on it. I'm just <laughs> and so there's this, Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, I have a little power given unto me in heaven and earth. All power. What's it say? All power. Now, 
here's the thing. If we really start believing that, just that right there, it'll change everything and it'll encourage you to start going. It'll change you from a grasshopper mentality to a, to a giant slave mentality. Because God said He has all power in heaven and earth and then He commands us to go that He's going with us, giving us all power and authority over everything. If you really believed you had authority over everything and power over it, what would you not try? Come on, are you with me this morning? So then he says, uh, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Also means go and make disciples. That's what we have up here. Just make, make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching him to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I'm with you all even to the end of the earth. So, I'm just going to point this out for Mission Sunday. Did he say go and make converts? Did he say go and get a notch on your belt saying, I led 10 people to the Lord today? You know what disciples is? Disciples is somebody you have a relationship with. It's somebody you're invested in and they know it. You've got a relationship with them, they've got a relationship with you, and you're teaching them all the things God is teaching you and you're bringing them up. That is hard work, and it's also called commitment. And someone can tell when you're committed to them. And that is what God told us to make. He never told us to go and make converts. There's nothing wrong with leading. I've led lots of people to the Lord, but I've always done my best to hook them up with someone in that area. But very few people know how to make a disciple. I, but as a church, we're called to make disciples. Amen? Twelve disciples changed the whole world. We may be a small church this morning, but if I do my job right as pastor and I raise up disciples, then you disciple somebody else. Now we've changed lives. Amen? Amen? Amen. So he said, go into church on Sunday and make a disciple. All nations. All nations. Into the world. Amen? And then you're supposed to teach them. That means you got to know something. And Jesus undeterred and went right away and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. So he, this is another version. So God's saying he authorized and he commanded them to command us. How many know it's a commandment to go? And if you love God, you keep His commandments. But He's saying, I'm also authorizing you. Can you imagine the Son, the Son of God authorized you to go in His stead? He handed you His scepter and said, Here, go and take dominion, take my kingdom to all the world. Yeah. Now you have an enemy or soul that's out to destroy you and stop you. But do you realize the authority that's been placed in you that He's trying to convince you that you don't have? He's scared to death that you're going to realize who you are in Christ. Come on. He's scared to death. You're going to start really realizing who you are in Christ. And you're going to go from understanding it to actually believing it and operating in it. I know people that's been in church 50, 60 years. They understand it better than most people. They can tell you every principle on top of pre principle, precept upon precept. But, and they'll tell you they believe it, they'll pray for it. But to actually have them stand in faith and bring it from the unseen to the seen hardly ever happens. And that's why the Bible says well, we, 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 we know these things but we deny the... I forget the verse, right? That's my name. cloudy. What is it? Yeah, the, I know, but I'm trying to... I, I know that what I'm trying to say, but I wanted it for Raven. I don't like hear about it. But we, we know the... We, we, anyways, we know it, but we deny the power there. Uh, we know the Spirit, but... And then another one says, go out and train everyone you meet far and near in this way of life. Now, how should this have changed the body of Christ when he gave this commandment? Go out and train everyone you meet far and near. So, do you realize that's a mandate? I just let that sink in. Marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Then instruct them to practice all I commanded you. I'll be with you to this day, day after day, right up to the end of the age. He's saying, 
you know, and some people say, well, I would go if I knew God would go with me. He's right beside you. He promises to go with you if you'll, if you'll go. Amen. And I can promise you, if you'll start going, you'll be shocked how much He's with you. I encourage you to start going. So this is the church He's coming back for. You see it reads final judgment, Matthew 25, 31. And when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all angels with Him, He sit on the throne of His glory and all the nations be gathered before Him and He will separate them one for another just as a sheep separates, the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. I do not want to be on the goat side. He will put the sheep on His right and goats on the left. Listen, as pastors, a lot of times we want to separate the sheep from the goat. We want to do it now, but it's not our job to do the culling, it's His. Now, unless they get into certain things and he tells us to separate them for buffeting, but that's for they'll be one back to the Lord, not to be thrown away forever. We do it because we love them, not because we're separating and deeming where they are. The judge, final judgment comes in heaven. Y'all with me? But I don't want to be a I don't want to be a goat. I only have power over me and I don't want to be a goat. And I'm afraid there's gonna be a lot of goats on judgment day if the church don't start cleaning up their act. Amen. Big smile. And that's not meant to put you in fear. Are you, are you hearing Pastor's heart this morning? I, I know what I have to say is raw and it's truth, but if I don't preach it, who's going to? If I don't tell you, who's going to? I'd rather you make heaven and be upset with me than get up there and be upset because you didn't make heaven. Amen. 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 And then the king will say to those on the right, come ye, but I really don't think you all get upset with me. I think the enemy just tries to beat me up to make me feel bad about preaching it so straight because hard ain't nobody talking to straight. Everybody's telling you how much God loves you. And, and God, you know what? I, I hope I tell you that a lot. I hope you realize. I hope you don't live in condemnation. I hope you realize how much Jesus loves you. How much he has for you. How, how good he is. And the thoughts he has to you are good. And he wants to bless you. And he wants to pour his blessings out upon you. I hope you realize that. Hope you know, I hope you don't think it's all about trying to be a good boy and girl because that's not it. Amen. So, come ye who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom of you from the foundation of the world. <coughs> For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. So, I want to just take a moment here. I know we're going fast. So, he separated what? The sheep and the goats. Now he's telling us how he separated them. Pay attention, church. He's telling us how he separated them. He brought the whole church. And he separated them, separated them out. He said, here's the sheep over here. Here's the goats over here. This is one of the tools he used. Are you with me? So it's very important. He said, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. He said, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. He said, I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in without clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or busy? The king will answer, I assure you, whatever you did to the once whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. See, all around us there's a hurting world. And the only Jesus they're gonna see is us with, is us with skin on. Him, uh, Jesus with us and skin on. In Jesus' name. Are you all, all with me this morning? That's all they're going to see. Now, I'm going to stop for a minute. I've got a lot more to share, but I want to share something. Because as when I was a young believer, I was really gung ho. Nobody believed that, right? I mean, you think I am now, but it didn't matter who it was. I thought we should help everybody, do everything. And like Pastor Billy, he had all these rules about who he helped, who he didn't help. And I didn't understand a lot of it. I just seen the word, this is what we do. But there's all sorts of things called enabling. Amen? Yep. So, in this verse here, if we went on that further, it really talks about those who are destitute. You know in America, it's really hard to find somebody that's truly destitute. You do find them. We minister to them. For one thing, if you take an old hot dog from me <laughs> and you're hungry and you chow them down instead of trying to get the money to go buy your bottle of booze or cigarettes, 
you're probably hungry. And I want you to know this church is implemented. Man. It, we, we, we have things implemented all the way from top to bottom. So we minister to those that I believe that are sitting in this class. Because the last thing I want to do is enable somebody that God's trying to deal with to bring them up and out of their mess. Right. Amen. 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 Hardly very rarely do I give money to people. Why? Because they want to do this with it, that with it, yada, yada, yada. It doesn't mean I won't help them. We do help. We're going to talk about tons of ministries we help all over the city. I mean, we, we feed thousands of people every month out of this little church. Amen? But I can't answer for any other church and you guys come to this church. And someday when you get to heaven, he's going to roll it up and say, well, I was hungry. Yeah. What did you all do with your time and energy upon this earth? The body you were associated with, how did it operate? Whereas it's important what body you connect with. Are you all following me this morning? Amen. So then he goes on to say, well, I can't even read that. <laughs> Must have got a copy of the copy. Oh, well. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you didn't take me in. Clothe me, sick, prison. And so when they go their way, go into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And so he literally is saying, how we treat those least among us matters. How we treat those that are broken. Who did he come back for? He said it's not the well that need the physician, it's the sick. And so, you know what I've, I've come to find out? I started to go off and I lost my train of thought for a moment. When I Also, when I was younger, I had no problem dealing with the ones that are down and out. But those that are well off, my thought was they're on their own. <laughs> well, I, mean, I still cared for their soul and I did those things, but I didn't see how they met this scripture. As Jesus growed me up as a man of God many years ago, I started seeing, because I see I laid well off being able to eat, drink, all those things to the physical realm. And Jesus and God said, No, I'm talking about spiritual and emotionally too. He said, There's many people that sit in their big houses that sit in the corporate offices that are emotionally can't eat, can't drink, they're broken. He said, and you walk by him with the, with the bread of life every day. You walk by him with the everlasting life of the Holy Spirit and the water inside you, and they're dying of thirst. Just like Lazarus was upon the great gap in the, down in, in the, uh, when he went to hell when he showed them. He said, they're over dying of thirst upon earth, and you walk by them, and you have the very life-giving force and water inside you, the Holy Spirit, and you're not giving them nothing to drink. And my whole life, my whole revelation started to change because it's easy to see it when they're broken on the outside. But when you start seeing broken on the inside, it's part of what I'm trying to get people even here in the body to see. Because you're walking by that person and they're totally broken on the inside. And you've got the bread of life. You've got the water. You've got the only thing that's going to save them and set them free. I got to I have a, a good friend down home. He may be watching. He watches all the time if he is. I love you. I'm not going to share anything personal. But uh, he owns a gun shop. He says he works for the devil. I told him only for so long. I'm about to call him out of there. I have been for 20 years. But he owns a gun shop and a liquor store. He's not saved. Don't go to church anywhere. But he's my friend and I love him. And when I, I go home, he was last time I was home, he was, in, he was almost in tears and he said, you know, you come here because you, not because you want something. And he's very well off. He said, not because you want something, just because you love me. I said, yeah, I do. And he's like, you don't want to watch your church. <laughs> Ever, all, all the time. I was like, praise God, you, you got saved yet? I'm close. <laughs> <coughs> and, but you know, when I first met him, he wasn't, I, I he was one of those, he was the first one God used to have me break out of that thing because I got to see what was in his heart. I, he didn't look like he needed anything from me. And he was probably one of the people that needed some of the most from me. And there's been many more like that. So it's not, a, we go to the streets a lot, we do those things. But I have a vision 
to reach all the world. Amen. I have a vision to reach all those that are broken. Amen. I have a vision to reach all those that are thirsty. Amen. Amen. Now, church, we don't. I don't do that alone. We do that together as a body. Yes. And this Sunday, I know I'm going long. We're going to give you account how we're how we're spending your money, how we're spending your resources, and how, what we're sowing into the kingdom of God. Because someday we're going to stand and give an account before God Almighty what we've done for Him. And I want you to know we're doing it our best. And I believe we'll have good fruit coming back from it. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to turn it over. Uh, I believe the first one up is, uh, you can use this mic, Sister Heather Hall. She's going to come tell us about the nursing home ministry. I know I've, I've been gone a while, so I had a couple stored up. You know, it's been a three for something today. Good morning. Well, two, every Tuesday night, we go out as a team and we go to the nursing homes, the local ones here in town, and we also do um, shut ins. We go to different houses, a couple houses that people that can't get out. And then, if needed, we'll go to the hospitals. If people are in there, we'll visit them. But, um, just want to share some things to you with you that God's been doing, you know. Um, with with all these people that we visit, we become like their family. A lot of their a lot of their family members kind of forsake them, they forget about them or or maybe they have Alzheimer's and they forget when they come and visit them. And so but they look forward to us. We it's like the highlight of their week. So <clears throat> just some things. Um, there's been, you know, quite a few people, like one gentleman, he's um, didn't want to want anything to do with us. We would bypass him, or not bypass him, but we would walk by him and reach out to him, and he just be like, just move on, you know. But as we loved on him, you know, it started out with just, you know, conversations, and then went to prayer, and then um, went to the drama team, and then finally he got saved. So, um, lots of people that we minister to, um, God moves them on to eternity and stuff, but God opens doors to more people that we can minister to, and now we're up on the third floor of the nursing home visiting people, and, and he's opening new doors, and there's been ministers that's been ministering for like 55 years, pastors that we get to sow into them, you know, they sowed into the kingdom, and now we're sowing into them and ministering to them. Um, let's see, there's... Lots of, there can be some demonic things that we have to take authority that people have, like, they've had hallucinations and things like that. We need to take authority over those things. And as we do that, we'll ask them for prayer, and then they'll let us pray for them. And then God gives us an opportunity to, to get them right with the Lord and they get saved before they pass away. So, um, we also bring forth the Word of God. There's this one certain lady that loves and looks forward to us sewing into her the Word of God, and we do little sermonettes with her, and and uh, she just looks forward to it, and she recognizes how faithful we are, and if she's in the hospital, we'll go see her, and she just said last week, wow, you guys are faithful, <laughs> you know, so it means a lot to them, and uh, she also rededicated her life back to Christ. Um, they love the snow cones, they love the popcorns. And they even sew in to, to our church. They'll give offerings. And that's a lot for them because they don't get a lot of money. So that's that says a lot for them. Um, there's been lots of fruit that's going to be coming forth. We've had two faithful people coming in every single week from the nursing homes. And we've had a physical therapist come and the nurse we've had come. Um... We also sew into the staff there. Um, they look forward to all the, the snow cones and the prayers and things like that. We just sew into them and minister to them. And they look forward to that. And they see our faithfulness. And when things are going on with the patients, they will come to us with, hey, I need you to pray for this person. You know, When they recognize that, that medical attention won't do it, they'll come to us. You know, they know prayer will change things. Um, the shut-ins, <clears throat> we go see Donna and Donna Gleason each and every single Tuesday. And uh, Donna, she had back surgery and stuff, and she hasn't been able to walk for a while. I think about, what, a year or two? It was a year. A year? Yeah. Well, anyway, she just recently 
uh, took four steps with each leg, and that was a lot for her. And they recognized where it came from. It's from God. So they know nothing else. It's just from God. And uh, Don rededicated his life back to Christ, and Donna got saved. Um, let's see. We got Sister Joyce. We visited her for, like, what, two years now? And you were bedridden for about two years, and she went from the bed to the walker, no, wheelchair, then the walker, then the four prong cane, then the single cane, and then soon you'll have nothing. So, you know, and your faith has grown and leaps and bounds, and you tell us where you're at in your, in your Bible reading, and so that's really neat to see. To see. So. Amen. So how many of you think has been saved over the last year through that just that ministry? I don't know. More more than my hands. <laughs> Amen. So, a lot. So, so did you, are y'all are y'all catching that? Mm -hmm. I mean that's the gospel in action, is it not? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. All right. Now we have hospitality ministry. Pastor Timmy, did you check your phone while ago? Right. All right. Did you read your sheet? of your uh, wording of something that you guys want to share with everybody this morning. Um, so with hospitality, it covers, may I go into those areas? No. Okay, I'm not sure which, can you specify please which one to go into? It's just a general one, Pastor Okay. Right now. Okay. Okay. Um, what that looks like. All right. Uh, um, I was very plain on this. Before. All right. Thank you. All right. With hospitality, uh, as a body, we take care of the body of Christ and those that are in need. And so we, as a body, we want to take care of those that are in need in the house. And we'll do whatever is needed uh, to extend a loving hand to help people out. And we're the church. And so we're the hands and the feet that are going to uh, be there for the body of Christ when they're down and out or if they need help. Um, like with Sister Joyce, um, we were there to help bring her up and out. She was, you're the body, you're part of the body, sis. And we have ministries that go out and help um, help her out, bring her up. And now we have you sitting in our church house giving praise to God and lifting him up. But whenever there's a need, we want to see those things met. You know, we meet people at their natural needs. So if there's those that go hungry, you know, we have the tools to, we pray with one another. But if there's a need, you know, we're going to help out one another and be there. We're, we're a body. We're one. And so we're going to do whatever it takes to extend a loving hand, be Christ to the church. And... And when things are needed, we'll be there for you. We're a phone call away. And, and so we want to see people um, taken care of and loved on. Amen. And so um, I'm not sure what else more you'd like for me to share with you. All right. Up next <laughs> is uh, Sister Becky on the media. to talk to you about the media ministry because this is one perfect example of where God gave Pastor Brian a vision. He told him to do something. We obey, or Pastor Brian obeyed, and we did it, and God has blessed it. Just, it, it has just grown 
um, through God, not not just through us. And it's just grown because, you know, Amen. we said okay and we did. Amen. And uh, we started out um, back in uh, January 26th of 2011. <laughs> we started streaming our our sermons um, through Ustream. And that was the only vehicle that, that we used for a while to, to stream our, our uh, sermons. And and uh, we... Uh, we, we got the message out. We got the rhema word out to to uh, to those that were watching. And that soon grew to, we have a YouTube channel. And so, um, and I don't want to sit here and, and read off numbers and talk facts to you and stuff like, well, I do want to talk facts, but I mean, um, <laughs> I don't want to just hear go over numbers. But um, but, it, but it's really fascinating because uh, we, we have faithful subscribers that, that tune in to, to YouTube. And we also have countries, multiple countries besides the United States that tune in. And they get that rain award. They get the word that, that God has downloaded into Pastor Brian and Pastor Tammy and, and those operating out of this church. And it goes out into the world and it goes forth. And which is really cool because, um, you know, like I said, it was just something that God told Pastor Brian to do. And he did and God took care of the rest. And um, so we, we are not only... Uh, we, don't, we not only have viewers in the United States, we have viewers in the United Kingdom, Germany, Australia, Vietnam, Thailand, Russia, uh, the Ukraine. I mean, it's just mind-blowing when I go in and I look and I see all the different people tuning in. But um, and, and, of course, you know, we don't have a little Broken Chains commercial going on in all these other countries. Those, that's just something God has took care of. You know, God has just uh, has blessed that. And um, uh, most of our viewers, uh, they come through YouTube. Uh, but <clears throat> again, uh, just recently this year, we have um, been blessed and we have grown to AIM Christian TV. And I don't know if any of you guys are, are familiar with that, but it's a, Ro it's a channel on your Roku. Um, just like you can download it like Netflix and Hulu. And it's just a Christian station. I and mean, how awesome is that? You know, this, our, our little church here in Springfield, Illinois is, is just... Um, is is project is what's the word I'm looking for? Well, there's a they have all kinds of guest churches every <laughs> yes. week, but yes. there's only two main churches. The other one looks like it's a church of a few thousand, and then they picked our church and that, and they charge other people to be on there, like uh, five hundred dollars a month plus so much per thing. They they approached us. They called. Wow. They contacted yes. us, and they do it for free. They they set it up. And they've given us a whole thing on the, on the TV station, and it's on Roku, but it's also nationwide. It streams in other places and other countries, yeah. and so, but yeah. yeah. And, I, I was just I just cannot stress enough that that we just said okay, uh -huh. and God has blessed it, you know. Uh -huh. And two people who know nothing about <laughs> videos and, and sound and all that stuff, you know. Of course, we've grown through that, but but you know, like God. The Bible says God can use a donkey. God can use two, like, really completely illiterate <laughs> <laughs> people in, in that stuff. And, but, but we said yes, and we said, no, I don't know how to do this, but I will learn and I will do it. And God has blessed it, which has just been really cool. And, and um, you know, just, just the lives that are being touched. You know, and like Pastor Brian said, a lot of churches aren't preaching the, the word and the truth. And this is one way we can go out and we can... Um, affect, or we can um, get the word out to to others, and um, you know we we have just upgraded our, our com computer system and and our video system. If you guys have not checked out a video, I encourage you to check out a video late, lately because there's just some really cool things we've added to it, and and so we are just continuing to grow, and I'm excited to see Amen. what else. And so yeah, Amen, yeah. And there's the, we'll never know the souls of the amount. I mean, we have an app now. If you're on Android, we have an app you can get it on. We have the website. We have Ustream, YouTube, and AIM Christian TV. We have people that pay their offering even into the church. They don't. They never even hardly step foot in the door. That watch live. So I can't tell you how many thousands of people come in. And to be honest, some pastors they they aspire to be on TV. I've never been one of them. And God really had to deal with me strongly, and no. we've not done. We, we don't have the best equipment. We have the best of anything. We have a heart that said yes. And I don't want you to, you know. So we, but we've had to invest money into it. 
We have to have invest money into it to do all the things we do. But the fruit is, th there's probably, I could say this without even knowing, I know I'm low bone. There's 10,000 people a month that are infected through the medium areas. You're probably closer to 100,000, to be honest. Yes. Oh, no, I I'm talking a month, not a year. Yes. And so that that is a lot of people that are getting the gospel. Amen. And, you know, it's uh, reassuring that they're taking a, you, you take the time all the way to come here, and some of them get up at 3 o'clock in the morning in Kenya to watch the very service that you came from for. So, amen. Just to give give you one number the past Brian was talking about, um, just with YouTube, this is not counting AIM or Ustream, um, and I believe, um, I'm about 99% positive, I was looking at different numbers, but... Um, it's hard to decipher it, <laughs> all the different information we so have. So I don't want to or mislead you, but I believe within the last just month we had, and these are just people that just viewed a video, uh, we had 39,967 viewers. So people are watching, people are getting the word. Amen. Isn't that mind-blowing? Amen. Amen. Thank and I thank you, thank the media team, thank Pastor Tammy, the hospitality team, thank Sister Heather and nursing home. We're, we're not done yet, but you know those are things y'all are sowing. Can you imagine thirty nine thousand people? And if nothing else, if I was you all, you know, you come to a small church and everybody tries to tell you why do you come here. Well, there's thirty nine thousand people out there every month that agree with you that they think they're getting a pretty good meat coming here. Yeah. That's a pretty, so you could say, I go to a pretty large church, they just don't all show up on Sunday. With <laughs> There's 40,000 people in our church, but only like only like 40 of us get to church on Sunday. Amen. Amen. That's, but that's pretty, that should incur, but you know, you guys are sowing in, just think, think of that, 40,000 people every month are being reached because of your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Now that's that's impressive, isn't it? Someday, can you imagine the souls you're going to meet when you get to heaven? They're going to say, "Oh, thank you so much." And you're going to say, "I don't know you." They're going to say, "Yeah, but you were faithful to Broken Chains Church, and you all sent that word out, and I got a hold of that, and it changed my life. Thank you so much." Amen. 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 All right. Who is up next? All right. Compassion Ministries, Sister Heather. We're going to roll along pretty quickly. Well, as quick as we can. Are y'all getting something out of this? Isn't it good to hear every year? You know, we're, have you noticed we're still growing in, yeah. in our outreaches? All right. Compassion Ministries, this is where we go every Friday to the homeless shelters. We have um, the overflow shelter that's only open from no November to March. And then we have our regular helping hands that's open all year round. And so God's given us favor with the overflow shelter, and um, Renetta, the, the staff worker, she just took us for a tour of the whole place and remodeled it. Um, she recognizes the, uh, our prayer life and stuff, and so she told us to take authority over the whole facility and just all those things. But this year, something new is they recently asked us to sit with them and eat with them. You know, and if you remember Jesus, he sat with all the um, the sinners and all that stuff, and the parish is like, what are you doing, you know? But that's what we do, you know, we're called to do the same thing. So we eat with them, we, we minister to them, <clears throat> and so um, that's really fun to do, and they, they really enjoy that. Um, let's see. All the residents, they look forward to us um, just coming and eating with them. One lady, she... She just calls us her guardian angels. She recognizes. She's like, God keeps sending you guys in my path. You know, we saw her out behind the alley. You know, she got jumped one night before, the night before. And she she's just had abusive relationships and things like that. But God's been knocking on our door and just reaching out to her. You know, she recognizes that. And uh, there's been multiple testimonies of people getting jobs and, and housing and you know, they're like, remember that thing you've been praying for? You know, well, I received it. And they, they recognize where it all comes from. And, you know, they're, they're in a place of, you know, um, hopelessness and hope, seeds of hope are getting reached out to them, planted into them. So, um, so we're doing a good work. Lots of people get saved, too. <laughs> Amen. We could, I really believe she could have went a whole service just telling you about the outreaches they do. Amen. Because... Literally, souls are saved every week. Literally, people that are, are ripped out of death's grasp and people at their lowest part of their life, some 
you, you all are sowing into the lives and giving them hope. And you know, that, he said he, he can call us to give hope to the hopeless. But like I said earlier, it, it's not just people that are that you can see on the on the physical outside. There's people that are hopeless that we would never dream are hopeless. Amen. And we're going to sow into them. So. All right, go ahead. Sorry, I forgot about the next shelter that we go to. Um, we go also to the Helping Hands uh, shelter. And um, there's one gentleman who just said last week he recognizes that, that he called us the encouragers because we come and encourage people and lift them up. And, you know, he's like, not a lot of people will do what you guys do, passing out hot chocolate and coffee. You know, we do that Salvation Army. And he just remembers the first day that he met us. And, um, and like Pastor Ryan said, people at the lowest of lows, you know, they... They're at rock bottom. We come there just to bring forth the word and Jesus to them and reach out to them and just give a hand of hope. Um, I guess that's about it. But there's numerous things that we could say. <laughs> Amen. All right. Next up is Pastor Tammy. She's going to come and put it all together for you about the greeting, breakfast, benevolence. And you might think, not think those are ministries, but... Uh, God uses those, and we can. How many remember, like, when the mother in law that was sick, did Jesus just say, No, we'll do without eating, or did He heal her so that she could serve? He healed her because He's seen there's value in that ministry. Amen? And there's so there's value in these ministries, whether or not, you know, a lot of times we don't see them, but there's value in them. So we're going to talk, and we, we sow into those. Amen? <laughs> Yes, and so one of the things we do is we have our greeting teams, and um, that will be increasing here in the future, those that are going to be a part of that. Um, currently, we have Sister Rachel. She's our greeter as um, the front, but as you guys enter in. She is the one, and maybe you don't know why she's there, but she's there. She's to greet you. She's to welcome you. And as you may not know, when you're there, you are are the first face that people see when they come into the church. And that is a great responsibility to say, hey, th this is my church. This is Broken Chains Church. And to show love to people as they come in. Because, again, you may be the very first face that they see. And so we want to love on them, encourage them. And one of the responsibilities of a greeter is to let them know where, what's going on. You know, if they see if someone that has a child, well, we're going to see that need and say, you know, we're going to help them understand how this church can fulfill, you know, help them where they're at to grow them up in the things of God. So we may say something like, oh, I see you have a little three-year-old. We have children's church today. It's at 1030 and explain what goes on. And so there's a responsibility as a greeter to know what is going on in the church and to have an understanding and stay up with the things that are going on. But they are the face. They're to love on them. And when we're coming in as brothers and sisters, to be an encourager to you and build you up. Because we may come through those doors. We may be, we may have just come after work and we're in the hustle and bustle. We may have just grabbed our kids. And we may be just kind of, sometimes you can be a little frantic bringing kids in sometimes. And we've all been there. But you know what? It can be one word from that greeter that at that moment that can just bring you right up and encourage you. But they are the face of the church. They represent who Broken Chains is. And so there's a responsibility that comes with being a greeter. And so we will be looking forward to more people coming on. And Rachel is one at the moment. And I don't know, Rachel, if there's something you'd want to share. If you could, is there anything you want to share about? Do you, it, I'm trying to think of something I could ask. Well, let me say, greeting is quite a responsibility. Now, everywhere that you go, you're greeted somehow, right? Whether it's good or whether it is bad, you are greeted somehow. And so here at the church, it, we, we take that responsibility and we want to say, hey, we want you to realize that we love you. We love you where you're at. And we're going to get, we're going to bring you forth the word in this house. And it first starts right there when they come through those doors. And greeting also moves into our breakfast ministry. And I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to say a few things here. But it moves into the breakfast ministry because guess what? If they don't come through those front doors first, 
guess where the next place is they're being met, whether it's the first or second place they see. They are also maybe the first face that they're going to see of who is this broken chain church? What are, you know, what are they like? You know, if you were to first walk through here, what is the first impression you would get? Well, they're going to get it by seeing Sister Rachel or Sister Sean or Sister Deb over there serving the food. How are they serving? Are they, are they loving? Are they kind? Are they doing, you know, are they serving with love? Are they, you know, the kids as they run around, are, you know, are they taken care of? All these things, they got a lot of responsibilities going. <laughs> on to serve and they have a servant's heart and it's all about serving I mean when we're in ministry it's all about serving having a servant's heart and so they're over there serving breakfast they're feeding the natural man okay the natural man but then to prepare them when they come over here to get fed spiritually with the word of God and you know a lot of these kids a lot of them don't have they don't have meals possibly they may not get fed breakfast before they come to us and what a ministry to be able to feed these kids so that they're ready so when they come into here or children's church they're ready to receive and maybe there's adults that you know wherever they may be in life they don't they need a meal they need something to take care of that hunger and they will we can provide that but greeting over there you know showing them what's that first face that they see at that time all right so that is greeting on those two and then we have a benevolence ministry and maybe you've been a part of that when someone passes on we are going to be there as a church to support you and your family and we we always offer um, a meal to those that are in need if they want it for their families and so i want you guys to know that we have a benevolence ministry so you know if that's something you're in need of we are here to extend that out to the family Amen. All part of it. Amen. All part of it. You know, I was a stranger and you didn't welcome me. You know, you know those things. I mean, you know, that's part of all that. That's part of the ministry. Next up is Sister Becky Leeson for the drama team. We're going to move along pretty quickly. Pastor preached three messages today. Yeah, yeah no. I don't want to rush you by too much. I would just mean for those that are speaking, once you stay or be ready, when it's your turn to, so we can. I just wanted to, to just give you. No, I don't want to rush anybody. So. <laughs> a quick word about the, the benevolence ministry. And, and I've been blessed to be the recipient of that quite a few times. Um, but uh, when Darren passed away, that, that ministry not only ministered to me, but people watched. I mean, my co-workers just cannot believe um, just just what a blessing my church was, and and of course, Darren's family. So not only is that ministry ministry blessing the person that's receiving it, but it also reaches reaches out to, to others. So I, I just oh, kind of yeah. you know, so put, put that on there. But anyway. Um, I was grieving and mourned, and you didn't come. You know, that's... Yeah. Um, we, we do have a drama team that, that operates out of, out of our church, and, and it is not only uh, consists of myself, but also Sister Shauna, Sister Rachel, Sister Bonnie, and Sister Heather. And um, not only, we, uh, we, we also go by that go ye, and we don't just do our dramas here in, in the church. We, we uh, team up with Compassion Ministries. Um, we go out every uh, third Tuesday of the month to the nursing homes and to the the, the the houses that, that they go out and minister to, and and then uh, the last Friday of every month we go out with them to the streets and also Amen. to the shelters and things like that. And um, of, of course, that's quite eye opening, but it's it, but it's really cool. And just just last month we we took a very simple message out, you know, just kind of you know God 101, you know, but but it, but it was a very simple message, and we. Um, four were saved at the nursing home, and Praise one of them was, was that gentleman that Heather was talking about, and um, and then we also had one saved on the streets. So, uh, which was which was really cool to, uh, to to see and to be a part of, and um, and they get very excited about that. You know, the nursing home we, people, uh, the residents there, they, they look forward to it. You know, and they'll they'll see that when the whole group comes in, they're like, oh, the whole game's here. You know? <laughs> 
and, and in the, the streets too. I mean, you know, there there are just people on the streets that when they see the whole group of us, they know that that they're going to get a, a special treat. And, and you know, and all we're doing is just sharing Jesus and just just through a different way. You know, not just just through. A, I mean, it's it's through a drama and. And um, our, our dramas are not cookie cutter. Um, we do use a couple scripts that that, that you know that, that we we find, but the rest of it is you know what God downloads into us, and and so so it's Rama as well. Amen. And um, so it, it's it's pretty cool cool ministry. So. Amen. So how many souls do you think have been saved over the last year? Oh goodness. Um, <laughs> Out there. Um, Just to, we're not going to hold you to it. We'll give you give us a roundabout. Quite uh, maybe ten to fifteen. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah.
think that's about oh, prophetic evangelism. Um, this is where we go once a month, um, whether it be to the stores, we've done bus ministries, maybe a restaurant, wherever God leads us. And this ministry will take you out of your comfort zone. <laughs> Because, you know, you're comfortable with one part, you know, one different ministries. But this is something that God will uh, explain to you and stuff and bring you in. But you're also Holy Spirit led. you got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And he'll send you to people just to encourage them that are either lonely um, or this one lady, you know, God told me that she, he wanted me to encourage somebody that night. So I was at Walmart and he just sent her into my path and, and, uh, to make a long story short, is just to let her know that she still had a purpose and a plan after her husband had passed away. And <clears throat> we get to minister to the greeters at Walmart and just things like that. So um, the van ministry, um, that is also part of greeting as well, because we're also the first person that they see before they come to church. So we got to greet them, and we're also ministering to the children's parents. They're not even, they may not be here in physical form, but we're ministering to them, we're reaching out to them, and uh, we pe we keep people accountable to keep coming to church. You know, if maybe they're shaky or wavering, wavering in some area, we're keeping them accountable, and we minister to them, reach out to them. Um, our, our bus is like a, a billboard, you know. It's like <laughs> just one gentleman a while ago. You know, he's like running to church. You know, he saw our church name. He's like, oh, I want to go there. You know, so it's like a billboard, you know, we're, and all these things that we do, we're not just doing it for ourselves, we're, we're representatives of Pastor Brian, Pastor Tammy, this church, and most of all, Jesus, and if they see you, they're like, oh, you know, the people that you minister to, and that's what they're seeing, they're not seeing us, they're seeing the people that we're representing, so. Amen, and for those that don't know, she's got a notebook up here that she's flipping through about 10 or 15 pages <laughs> trying to be respectful of y'all's time of miracles that have happened during these things that y'all have done and sometime I'd like to take a little more time and just read because see I get to hear all this stuff all every week and I get three or four sheets a week on things that go on and you know this is the gospel in action and if you haven't got to be a part of any of this Come be a part. But I want you to know that you're sowing into this house. This is the fruit that's coming. And you've seen what he's going to be asking someday when you get to heaven. And the one that stays and does this and does that is the same as the one that goes. But he's called us all to go. But in whatever season you're in right now, you know, I, he, right now he's called me to be the teacher. I don't get to go that much. I am struck more now. That's the season he's got me in. But I still get a reward when I get to heaven. Amen. 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 All right, who is next? All right, we have, yeah. <laughs> Come on up. All right. <laughs> Another ministry is Children's Church. All the little kids. Woohoo! We're saying, why didn't we have Children's Church today? Why? I think the adults church are like, today. why did we not? <laughs> 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 no, but Children's Church, awesome ministry. Um, and this is where we get the ages from the time they can sit up in a seat by themselves to teenagers. Okay, so this is the span we have uh, for Children's Church. And we're so thankful to have them. We get to pour in the Word of God to the younger generations coming up. They're our future, and we're going to pour in them and pour, pour, pour the Word of God into them. And they love Jesus. And you guys have heard me say that they love Jesus. Um, but we have fun over there. Sister and Heather and I, we lead it. And then um, we have some other people that help out different times when we do different things. We'll have an occasional person help us out. And we're thankful for all those that assist and help out. And so thank you for that. When we're over there... We also, like the drum team, we have the Rhema Word over there. We don't buy material or programs. We come up with our own material, and we do our crafts over there. And we have music over there. And as you guys know, uh, recently we've added the, the bubbles and the fog over there. Because we are investing in the young people. We're investing in the kids that come here at Brother Chains. Because we love them. We care for them. We want them to have fun learning about God, how awesome he is. And we want to extend more to them. And so that was one way we could show that um, God loves them. And then we want good for our for our kids, you know. We're going we're gonna to 
lay it all out and have a good time. And so we have the Rhema Word, we have the worship, we have crafts, and we have Harold. You guys love Harold. And then when we have guest speakers, of course, Chef has to make his appearance. And that is always fun. Those are our puppets that are next door. So kids love puppets, and so that's one way we give our lessons out uh, of the Word of God. And it draws the young people in. And um, and then when we have time, we do give snacks and things over there. And so just the whole route rounded children's church for kids. So get the word out there. Anybody you know that has kids, get the word out there. Bring them in. We, you are promised that we're going to be filled with the word of God and well taken care of. And we love kids very much in here. And we will do everything we can to invest the word of God in them and love on them. Amen. How many of you think kids have gotten truly saved? Oh, goodness, Sister Heather. It's a lot. And sometimes we may not have, we have our kids that are some of our regulars, and we always have kids on top of that. There may be a time where maybe a Sunday, none of them come forward. But then there will be a time we have a whole group of them come forward that makes up just for all those other times. But they love Jesus so much. A number, oh my gosh, what was I saying? Sometimes there's like 10 each service. Yeah, there could be like 10 kids, you know, and it's, I'm trying to think, there's 52 weeks in a year, I mean, there could definitely be like one, so a, one a service if you spend it all, at least, I would say. So, but that's that's quite a lot of, of young children that are making a decision for Christ. Yeah, yeah. And some will say, well, they're too young. Well, Jesus said, suffer not to those children to come unto me. And you know what? I don't know what the age is when they truly decide, but I know that God said His seed and His word never returns void. Yeah. And if we put the seed in, it won't return void. And y'all are sowing into that. We've sold in a lot into that ministry. And you know what? I see Jasmine, some others ain't here today. We need to check and see where they're at. But uh, we have a lot of kids that come here. Y'all see a lot of people get saved, amen, that would never get it. And uh, that's the gospel going forward. And we thank you all for sowing in your time and energy. How many you know that? They're, they're, there's no junior Holy Ghost. <laughs> amen. He's, he's one and the same. And it takes just as much work to put a sermon together for the children, if not more, than it does for the adults. Amen. All right. Uh, next up is Sister Heather on the bread ministry. We're almost done, folks. Just bear with me. All right. Well, we uh, pick up Panera Bread um, from two locations. Oh, it's, that's all we have here in Springfield. And we do it. We started out with doing it two nights a week, and then now we just got another opportunity to go out and get, pick it up another night. So that's three nights we're picking up bread and we're processing it. We have freezers, we rotate it, and we donate it to, um, well, first of all, we use it to, on Friday nights, we feed those that are in the shelters and um, we use it for the breakfast ministry. We use it for, um, let's see, our own food pantry, those that are in need of food. Um, we also use it, we deliver, we donate to the bread line. So it's being used to the Springfield community and they pass it out and they put it on the tables for people to take free for all, you know. It's also used for the food pantry at the Salvation Army. They're open like I think Monday and Tuesdays and so people from the community come there and they rely on that and uh, the Salvation Army is very appreciative of us doing that. And so is the bread line. They appreciate us bagging the bread. They've taken the time to do it. So it's not, you know, we're doing it and they appreciate, they see the fruit of it. Um, we also we also deliver <clears throat> every Friday to um, Timberlake Estates, to the Supportive Living, I believe it is, the one behind Abundant Faith at the top on the hill. And, huh? Saturday. On Saturdays, yes, at 10 a.m. And the, the older ladies and men, they, they love it. They'll blow kisses at you when you deliver. They're like, oh, thank you, you know. and. You know, I don't know what exactly they use it for, but they use it, it's being used for them to eat, and they appreciate it. They love it a lot. And uh, um, so we deliver weekly, and even those that just stay behind, they're also getting a reward from what they're doing, you know. And so God, he keeps good records for all that we do. So. Amen. Well, we had numbers at one time. I think <coughs> it's thousands you all are providing every month. 
and you'd say, well, we're getting a gift to this. How much can it cost? How much are we invested in? Well, by the time you heat and cool the buildings, by the time you buy the freezer bags, by the time you buy all the things to process it, we have teams that work two or three times. It's quite an operation that goes on behind the scenes that no one in the world ever sees. But Jesus does. Amen. And we do it because he said, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. And it's first, I believe it's spiritual we need to feed. And that's where like the media ministry comes in. That's where you guys come in going. But it's also physically. And we're doing our part there. You can't say, well, you know, we didn't do anything. You know, so many times you hear churches, they say, well, we're just such a small church. We can't do anything. Well, that's not faith. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. And I believe we, we've proved that because here you guys are taking care of almost the whole city of Springfield. They rely mm -hmm. upon that. You could you could ask. And it, like I, there was a little mix up here a while back. The Salvation Army changed buildings. They weren't cooperating, talking to one another. And I know Sister Heather was worried. And I said, don't worry. <laughs> the, they want it. They'll be getting a hold. And you know what? They got to straighten it. Don't you be taking mine. You bring that over here. And you bring that here. You know, and because they depend upon it. It's not just something, oh, thank you. We'll find something to do with it. There's people that are hungry that are depending upon it. Not something that just, oh, I want a free handout. Right. You know, when we take it on the streets, it's, it's, that, it's that way. And so, and, and we, we, the other part, I guess, I'll just elaborate on the bread. Is something that most people don't know that I didn't know. Panera makes everything fresh. Did y'all know that? Mm -hmm. So there's no preservatives. So you know what happens to something with no preservatives <laughs> after about a day or so? It goes bad and it spoils. Well, I'm a hillbilly and the Holy Spirit talk, talk to me. Come to find out it's all very scientific and professional. But guess what? I didn't need to know that. I just need to know the Holy Spirit. He said, you just cut it up, put it in, in freezer bags, squeeze all the air out of it and freeze it, and it'll be fine. And I'll cause you how to use that to rotate it so the whole town can use it for months because everybody was getting this stuff and nobody could keep it fresh long enough to give it to anybody to use because it was spoiling. And so now we have all these teams that come, process it, and you also sew in the finances to help put it because it's very expensive to do. I know we have a lot of you even sewing your own finances to help. And, and then... It's fresh and the people can still use it. They can use it whenever they need it. Not, do you understand? And you all sow into that. That's just a, you say, well, that's not a soul. Well, how many know that sometimes that's the first thing that warms a cold, cold heart enough that you receive right. Jesus? Mm -hmm. right. Amen. All right. Uh, last but definitely not least, Pastor Tammy on vacation. Bible school, which is coming up again soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, VBS, Vacation Bible School, hopefully it perks uh, excitement. Some it may perk a little, ah, but <laughs> you can have mixed emotions on there. But Vacation Bible School is awesome. It's fun. The kids, this is us sewing into the kids and the kids in the community. And maybe it's family, friends. Of you know the kids that you know that you bring into the church because you know they're going to have a wonderful time they're going to get uh, the word of God into them and it is we do a three day I think it's a three day event three or four and we have fun last year we had a time and we we put stuff all over the walls and we had tons of people here working hard getting it all changed we had a huge backdrop back here we make it fun for the kids. Yeah, we had a great time, and so we have it totally decorated, and then you come to church, and you're like, this place just got transformed into some other <laughs> thing, and so we had a, we have a blast to get it ready, and I know some of you said we had so much fun getting ready last time that you couldn't wait for it to be here this year, and so, um, but also with VBS, we don't buy a program for VBS, just like all the others. It's Rhema Word. Every lesson is what God gives us. All the um, the crafts we do, it's you guys doing it and, and praying about it and then getting the supplies, you know. It, so, and all the decorations, we think it up, we plan it out, and we do it. And it's our stuff that God has given us for this house. So it is also the Rhema Word that we're giving out. What God has for this season, for this house, for our kids. And all those kids that are coming in. And so um, we see salvations through Vacation Bible School. We give altar times to that. So you guys can be encouraged that when the kids do come, they're going to be extended the invitation for Christ. They're not just going to come have a good time. Okay? That's, they're not just here, oh, this, there's some fun at that church. Go down to that church. You're going to have fun. 
Well, they're, well, they're going to actually get to come here and hear the Word of God and have an opportunity to know Jesus Christ. Amen? And so, I want to encourage you. We have vacation Bible school every year, right? And so this year, we'll have it again. And we're praying into what we're going to do this year. And I want you guys to be on board and get excited this year because guess what? More stuff's going on the walls, more backdrop, more fun stuff back there. I mean, last year we had the kids walking on water. How cool is that? Walking on water. So cool, you know, just like Jesus, right? <laughs> and so we have fun. And, and I want you guys to get ready for it. It's going to be a wonderful time, and we'll let you guys know what those things are. But we pour in, and we see souls saved, and, and I'm excited. So, yes. Hey, and I know this took a long time. I know it's late. I need some of those sheets. But uh, I'm not going to add much to it. I know it's been a long time. <laughs> We'll give you a lot of information on this one day. But we only take one day out of the whole year. And I believe it's important to know what you're sowing into. And really, we didn't even do it justice. We could have spent a whole day on each one. I get to hear all the stories. Someday I'm going to get them. I want them to... There are certain stories that I hear and they just, they just grip my heart. And I know that one of the people that are doing it all the time, they just, uh, Sister Shawna, you're involved in a bunch of these. Is there anything you wanted to share about anything? Uh, anybody else that does any of the bread, anything? Anybody who wants to share? Just where you're at. I mean, it's, 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 it is a blessing. It does really change your heart on things. It really, there are things that, that you don't think of or you take for granted for many different, I mean, from everything from the nursing home to the streets, those are two way different things, and it's, and I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't know what I would do if I, with my time other than what I'm doing with it now, you know what I mean, like, if I stopped it, I, I don't think it would just, it'd be time wasted, is what it is, I mean, it's, time is of the essence for some of these people, and, and it's just, it, I mean, it just, it blesses you beyond belief. There's so many things. Amen. Amen. And so thank you for being faithful. Thank you for sowing into the kingdom of God. Thank you for believing in the vision. Thank you for being involved in it. The best is yet to come. We have so much more to do for the kingdom of God. But it starts inside each one of us. So thank you for praying for me. I'm still resisting. I, I know it's not as hot here as I'm sweating up here right now, but uh, God is faithful to his word, amen? And I know a lot of you are going through different things right now, and I just want to encourage you that I'm praying for you, and that God is faithful, and he didn't bring you this far just to watch you fall. He brought you this far so that you could bring his name glory. And I want to encourage you just to hang on. Hang on to God. And you know what? And, but I also want to encourage you to get involved in some of these things. These are not, if you notice, I took the time. I know where it's late, but I took the time before we started to point out in the Word of God why we do each one of the things we do. And he said, this is who I'm going to go to the left. I want to be in that group. I don't want to be part of the body of Christ. And they say, well, hey, I showed up every Sunday. He said, that's not what I ask you to do. Amen. It's one of the things I ask you to do, but it's not the only thing. I mean, it's good to show up. Please don't, <laughs> Please don't take that out of context. <laughs> Some people say, well, I went to the streets. Why do I need to go to church? <laughs> but I love you. Th I, I can't, I, I really, as pastor, I can't say thank you enough because you know, other than that, I'd just be some guy up here that heard from God, and you know what? I, I, I can't implement everything He's given me by myself. Amen. And and I want to encourage you that try some of these ministries; they'll forever change your life. And there was people that I, I you know, I I understand some of it can be a little intimidating, but He promised He'd go with you. And you know. These are the things right now that he's given our church to do. That he's waiting for us to go and he can't he can't I told you it's only like ten percent, but until we fulfill all of this, he can't we can't 
go with some of the other things he's given us. Amen. For one thing, I can already tell you that someday we're going to be planting some other churches and other communities that are doing the exact same thing we're doing in this community. It's just a fact for me. I just don't know the when. But thank you for staying the course with us. Thank you for believing with us. I mean, I, and I, listen, I know we're not the only church in Springfield. I know we're not the only church in Springfield doing a lot of these things, but I do think we're one of the few that's doing all of them. And I don't mean that arrogantly. And a lot of you, I encouraged you because some of you started going, you know what? It's just something I learned in my own personal life. There was one time in my life I was, I was single, I was lonely. You're doing all these things. You know, the best thing to do is to sow into somebody else when you feel that way. Because I promise you, there's somebody else out there that's in rough, worse shape than you are. And when you start ministering to them, God starts ministering to you. And I encourage you to start going and ministering to them. Because it'll change you from the inside out. Amen. There's one other thing I was supposed to say that I can't remember now, so I guess you're about done. Praise God for the can't remember, huh? I know it's late. But, uh, oh. We haven't talked about it for quite some time. I'm still working out the details. I've about got the release to do it. We have something around here that we haven't done in about it. The enemy attacked pastor's body and it's no secret and uh, God's still working some things out but I mean remember we still have a Bible school and for those of you that are wanting to do things we like for you guys to take first year if you start doing a few things around here we at least like you to commit to say you're going to take first year when it comes and we have second year and third year and it never fails as soon as I breathe in these things up. Somebody feels like we're trying to pressure them and all this stuff. You don't have to believe me, but my heart is, well, I do these things because I love you and ministry will destroy you if you don't do these things first, if I don't give you these tools. Mm -hmm. There's no way you'll be able to survive it without it. And it's not, that's not fiction. <coughs> that's not just what I think. I, I believe that is fact. And these are tools that God's given me to help people to be able to handle it. All the, the Bible says to know that we can know the enemy's tricks, we can know all this stuff. And I give you, a, I do my very best to give you all the tools, the things that I know, how to deal with them. And to put you in a place where you, because it's not if you're going to have to deal with them, it's when. So that puts you in a place where you're going to have to deal with things and not know how to deal with it would be wrong for me as your pastor who loves you. So. Those are going to, I know at least first year is going to be starting again very soon. I know we have a couple that have been waiting. But I know a few that's committed. I know a few more that want to. That's going to be fine. We're going to be starting that soon. And uh, if you're doing things, I'll be calling that marker because I want to give you the tools of how to deal with stuff. Amen. 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 You say, what's that got to do with Mission Sunday? Well, maybe you were inspired today to start going. Well, I want you to start going, and I want you to start going with all the tools you need to accomplish it. Because there's a lot to it. Amen? And I want you to be successful. So, we love you. That was my other thing. Pastor Timmy, I'm, it's almost 1 o'clock, these poor people. <laughs> Well, actually, yeah, it's almost when you come dismiss us. I, I'm done. God bless you. Thank you for coming today. I'll keep praying for you all. Y'all keep praying for me. Uh, before we go, this is the Holy Spirit. It's not me. I feel led to do this. One more thing, Pastor Tim. I want to hear from you all for a moment. As a body of Christ, what's some things that you got from today? What's some things that you're... I don't use this word very often that you're proud of as a church that you're doing for God, some things that spoke to your heart. Uh, Just with the media ministry, how the TV program, they came to us and then they didn't charge us for free and then it was the favor of God. You know. Yeah. 
Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Amen. Sister Becky. I got something to add on to that, and I kind of alluded to it earlier, but it just spoke to me even more. But it's just, we just said, okay, you know, this is what, you know, we, we recognize what God told us to do, and so we did it. And God has blessed every single ministry, opened up doors that other churches have been trying to do for, that they can't do on their own. And, you know, and, and they just didn't say yes with the right heart. They just said yes just to to promote themselves. Well, we said yes to promote Jesus and to get the word out. And, Amen. and we, and a lot goes on here. It just blows, I mean, and I'm in a lot of it, but it just blows my mind every, every Mission Sunday. Just how much this, and I hate to say tiny, but just, you know, this, this church does you know but it's only through god and it's only you know and, and we just said yes and that and that's all god asked for is just somebody that says yes amen you are so right i want to hear from us i'll just allude to, elaborate on it just a little bit people all the time they want me to come give them some plan well how do you get started in, in this and how do you start that so you just say yes you go yeah. he said go ye and he does rest but everybody you know but you also, like she said, we do it. We, I don't care if anybody ever knows who broke and changed churches. Most people probably don't even have a third of what we do, but God does. Right. And he keeps really good records. Somebody else today, something you got. Yes, sir. Uh, I, myself, uh, I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the ministry that Sister Heather got when she came to a helping hand. And um, she's the one that got me coming to the church here, and and I was I was looking for a church, and and, and if it hadn't been for her, I'd probably still be looking for a church. Amen. We're blessed to have you. Amen. See, it's a go ye gospel. He never told them to come to us, but he told us to go to them. Amen. Somebody else today. Something you got out of today, Sister Bonnie. I was just impressed with how many nations God has opened the doors to through the video. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Yeah. And half the time we even forget that little thing's back there. <laughs> why it works. <laughs> that's why it works. Yeah. You know, that's one thing Pastor Billy, he said, he said, it's just amazing what all y'all do. I mean, we had to get the lights and they all, it's really improved the quality. But He's like, I thought you had to have all these big tripod cameras, which they all help. It would be nice to have some. He said, I thought you guys had to have us. He said, but you guys are on TV, and you ain't got nothing but an old camcorder. I said, yep. <laughs> but God. Amen. But you know, it's not about being on TV. To me, it's about God has put something inside me that he's given to you all that he feels is so precious that he wants the world to hear. Amen. Somebody else. I'll take just a couple more and give you a chance. Anybody else something that God showed you today? Going once. Some of you are like, Pastor, just let me go home. I'm hungry. <laughs> All right. Pastor Tim. Amen. Well, that was awesome to hear everything and what a blessing. You guys all are in your faithfulness and your heart to serve the body of Christ and, um, and just the world in general, you know, being ready and available. And so thank you for all you guys do. It's it's like a well-oiled machine around here. It's awesome. It's You guys really got everything. Um, it's just going great. And so thank you. Thank you for your time. It, um, it doesn't go unnoticed. And so truly thank you for all you that... Um, work in the ministry and, and excited for those that are going to be coming up who are raising them up and bringing them into what God has for us now moving forward. There's more to come, more to do, more hands are needed, more feet ready to go and go where we're needed to go. And so uh, if you're not a part of something or you want to be part of more, it's, it's time to get on board. It's going to be awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. And so thank you.